So this weekend I completely ruined this spinner. It looked kind of like the other one I just showed you before. But I was thinking why not recreate it the exact same way and then show the camera how I did that. So first we got to disassemble it. These are Brad spinner shafts. They're a little bit thinner than other ones you can buy, which is nice because it makes them easier to bend and stuff. But you could use any one. Oh, I just bent this one. That's kind of a problem. You can use any type. There's some that are thicker. This is like 0.31 millimeters, 0.031 inches thick. And that's what I use for this. As you can see, it, it bent and got ruined. And so now we have to reassemble it. But first you slide on a bead, eight millimeters. In this case, it's just gonna go on the back of the spinner like that. Two 3 16 ounce Titan tungsten uh, bullet weights. These are meant for Texas rigging for bass, but they work pretty well for spinners. They're more dense than lead, so you can get a little deeper in the water column. This is called Mylar tubing, and it's used for putting it around squid jigs, but it works pretty good on spinners. You gotta kinda open it up. You can use the body of your lure to do that. If you push it down the front of the shaft, it like pushes a hole in it. Anyways, and then it ends up like that. And I don't want it to end up around this bead, but that's just a matter of preference. And then you gotta get out your fly tying bobbin. In this case, I'm using a olive dun color. That's a matter of preference. You pull it tight on there and you just give it a bunch of wraps. And then you do your whip finish, which I just go like this three times. And then I pull it tight. Try not to break your thread. And then I'll do that a bunch of times and you can super glue it too, which I haven't been doing, but you totally can. You totally should really. So I do at least nine whip finishes, three at a time, tighten, three at a time, tighten. I guess I'll do 12 on, in this case. See how it's like gonna end up kind of wrapping around the tail part, around the egg. I like to cut it off, make it look like a skein or something. And then I do the same thing on the other side kind of pulling it closer to the end of the wire on this side. Cut everything off. Okay, so that's the body. And then we just gotta put on the clevis and the blade and finish it with two beads. And I'll show you that. Where the heck did my blade go? Oh, here it is. So I got these on Amazon. It's a uh, Quali Quali, some Chinese brand. But uh, you can get them at like Outdoor Emporium and stuff too. These ones are pretty small. See how the, I put that little clevis in there? You run the wire through the clevis. Like that. And then I was using these little tiny four millimeter glow in the dark beads. They're tiny. Um, I was using them for squid jigging all the time, but they work pretty good to finish off a, a, a spinner as well. Oh, and actually I forgot. I always do this. Um, you want to put a bead on and then the clevis because that helps it rotate. 
So let's do that really quick. Now we put on the spinner blade. Got it. And then you add another bead to create like a buffer. If you finish your wire bad, then the tag end can grab the blade and like stop it. We don't want that. And I got these at a hobby store. They're meant for creating loops and wire, but they're like a little too lightweight. Um, so with these ones, they taper to fatter towards the base of them and I put it I don't know a third of the way in because if you put it too close to the tip you can make a nice tight loop but um you just there's no holding power for this thicker wire because it's meant for jewelry and and thin wire stuff so anyways i put it in about a third and then you need another pair of pliers to create your loop like that try to keep it try to uh, there we go. Try to keep it nice and snug in there. Pull it towards the pliers. Keep it really tight. And try not to squeeze the bead into the clevis because that will impede action kind of a lot. Um, the nice thing is you have a little play with the, the whip finish and the um, mylar tubing you have a little play there so if it's completely snug against it it might still uh, be looser than you think and then you just cut the wire off and you're done with that part you just add your hook which is super easy actually i'm gonna i'm gonna loop it a little further so i can grab it without the eye that i just made getting in the getting in the way there we go now I should be able to nip it off, nip it off a little easier. So yeah, that's how it looks. It's pretty cool. And I was using this hook before, which I believe is a size one. But I have a bunch of these Siwash Gamma, Gamma Katsu, if I said that right. Um, and all they are is just hooks with open eyes and you can crimp them down on there. Let's see, this is size one right here. Let's see if the, it lines up with the hook I'm holding. Okay, so the hook I'm holding is actually a size two, which is a little bit smaller. Where are those at? Okay, so here's the size twos. I'm gonna just stick with exactly what I had before because I really liked how it looked in the water. I'm not gonna change anything. And again, I destroyed this by snagging up and then the, the wire kind of bent in the middle and it ripped the, the tubing and it, it just destroyed everything, but I at least got it back. So now I can recreate it. But anyways, these ones are hard to do because the, this bend, this, this little gap here, is actually smaller than the wire. So you have to like snap it in, kinda. There we go. And then you close the gap with some pliers. Let's see if I can get that. And then you're done. And that's how you create a super ghetto, super awesome spinner. Let's go fishing. Thank you.